de deksel is eruit. Ik ga hem eruit. En hier hebben we dus een gedeelte van de grassilage die het dier zojuist gegeten heeft. When I saw this, for me, that was the very limit. Animal diseases, animal suffering, animals that were no longer treated as living beings. I had seen it all. And I thought, no, not in my name. I want no part in this anymore. And so can the deksel get her weer op. In the factory farming industry, animals are adapted to the food that we choose to give them and to the massive stalls in which they are forced to live. They are mutilated, they are giving antibiotics to stop them getting sick. Pigs are now sometimes even given anti-stress pills to help them cope with their unnatural living conditions. Yet the fact that it turns out that livestock makes an enormous contribution to greenhouse gas emissions by belching, farting and defecating doesn't necessarily mean that we'll start keeping fewer cows, pigs and chickens. No, the industry will simply dream up something new. Would you believe it? They now even make fist-sized pills to stop cows from farting so much. But you know, consumer resistance against factory farming is steadily growing due to increasing awareness of animal suffering that it entails. And sometimes you come across people from an entire different background who surprise you. It was in America that I met a man who is known as the mad cowboy. He was a factory farmer who got out of the livestock industry and went vegetarian around the time of the mad cow disease crisis in Europe. Hi, nice to finally meet you. Nice to see you're unlost again. Yeah, finally, Come to we my, made it. My humble abode. Thank you. Oh, it's nice and warm here. This is, this is on the farm, and uh, this is one of the dogs we had, which was Sam, good critter. That's the farm. I'm a fourth generation farmer, rancher, feedlot operator from Montana. At one time, I had 7,000 head of cattle, 12,000 acres of crop, and 30 employees. I spent 45 years of my life in production agriculture. Not something I learned from a book. I learned it by doing it. I was a factory farmer, the worst of all. Not a family farmer, but a factory farmer. Never met a chemical I didn't like. Uh, we'd actually grind up animals and feed them back to our animals. Uh, had all of the bad habits. What are you doing here? Branding. Oh. See there? I branded hundreds of thousands of animals. It's still allowed? It's still allowed in America? Absolutely. 1979, I ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, doctor told me I had a tumor on my spinal cord. He said, if that tumor is on the inside of the cord, you have less than one chance in a million you will ever walk again. Made me stop and think for the first time in my life, that I was part of the problem, not part of the solution. I saw the birds die, I saw the trees die, I saw the soil changed, and it was not until I was paralyzed that I was willing to admit that I was the problem. I ended up with a one in a million operation. I walked out of the hospital with a one in a million operation but I walked out a much different individual than I walked in. I knew that what we were doing was wrong, was absolutely, totally non-sustainable. Here's a, a scone that my wife made. Try that.
vegan. Everything in the house is vegan. Yeah. There's, there's no animal products in, in anything that we have here. Oh, and, and it tastes good. Everybody thought the same way. It was mass hysteria. Everybody was doing it. It must be okay. You started when, from the time you were a child. And can you imagine what it was like when I first asked myself the question, should we be eating animals? It was one of the most uh, thought-provoking questions I ever had in my life because I had never even considered that. No. And when you stop and think about it, it is so straightforward and open. Should we eat animals? Absolutely not. Do we need them for protein? Absolutely not. Are they good for us? Absolutely not. Do they enjoy us eating them? Absolutely not. My hometown newspaper put my picture in the front page and it said, Montana's most famous vegetarian. I picked up the phone and I called him up and I said, why don't you tell it the way it is? Montana's only vegetarian. And they said, now we have one of you kind of guys here at the paper, so we know there are two. But people, people don't want to believe that somebody that from the inside of the industry, you know, that when you look at it, the one thing when I debate the issue with somebody from the industry, their common defense is, oh, well, you don't understand. I spent 45 years of my life there. There's nothing that they have done that I haven't done more of it. I've milked more cows, I've slopped more pigs, I've fed more animals, and when they tell me I don't understand, I understand. And what I understand is what we're doing is wrong, it's non-sustainable, it's not good for us, it's not good for the animals, it's not good for the planet. The sooner we stop what we are doing, the better we'll all be. Did you also notice that there were, are more uh, women vegan or vegetarian than men? Well, yeah. You know why? why. Tell me why. They're smarter. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you know why women live longer than men? Hmm, tell me. Because men have to live with women. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I did is I went out on the road and I started talking to people. I traveled about 100,000 miles a year. It was not unusual for me to do three or four lectures a day. Some of the groups were large, some of them were small. The largest group I ever talked to was 40,000. The smallest was two. We should never count the crowd. You never know how many people that are there are going to get the information. My job was not to save the world. My job was to do everything that I could do so people would make better choices. And I've done that now for over 20 years. And I think that when I had the opportunity I was able to change the way a lot of people thought. Was it going to be enough? I don't know. But I did what I could. Do you think there are more vegetarians now? now oh, sure. The, uh, you know, my hometown uh, actually had a vegan restaurant. Isn't that amazing? The man that gets the Nobel Prize for the film on global warming neglects the number one cause of global greenhouse gases. Does that give you some idea of the power of the industry? That, that a man that was out there to, to change the world on global greenhouse gases, do you think he did not know about it? Or was he just unwilling to stand up to the power that they had. When I went on the Oprah show and I told 
a few million people that we were grinding up cows and feeding cows, they sued Oprah, Harpo Production, and myself for six years in court. Cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars to protect ourselves for telling the truth. My reaction is that uh, free speech not only lives, it rocks. Maybe Al Gore was worried about the power of the industry, or maybe he was self-serving because he actually raises cattle himself. And if you look at Al since he left office, there is no doubt in my mind that he's eating well too many of them.